Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet the Autumn Glow Mitts. This is an easy and little project you can make for fall and you can customize with some optional decorative buttons. We have a really pretty textured, uh, kind of woven um, boxy stitch that we're gonna be using. And these are an, a mirror image of each other so that the, um, the seam, which is pretty subtle anyway, uh, stays on the back part. There are two sizes, and if you go to the Fiberflux blog and look at the written pattern, you can see the two sizes as well. There is a smaller size, which is uh, what we're going to be making today, and that is uh, five inches tall with, a, with an eight inch circumference. There's also a larger size that you can make, and that has a nine inch circumference and is about five inches tall as well. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a five millimeter H crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle. You'll need some buttons. Now I have a big pile here. You'll only need two buttons, one per mitt. I just grabbed a few to kind of give you some ideas. These are lovely little fall leaves to give it kind of a natural seasonal look. I also have these textured flowers. This is a recycled coconut wood. So any kind of buttons you like if you're saving them for a special piece. This is a great way to show off some unique buttons. Now the buttons are going to be purely decorative. They're not functional. So you can really go crazy with some of these ones that have points that might normally catch on things um, and really use a special button and you'll need one per mitt. And you can use different buttons. You could put a different one on each mitt. It's totally up to you. You'll also need your yarn. I'm gonna be using a yarn called Himalayan Trail. This is by Bijou Spun from the Bijou Basin Ranch. This is really fabulous yarn. I did a yarn 101 on this, and uh, if you need to learn more and uh, uh, get the yarn, it's uh, bijoubasinranch.com. But um, if you need to substitute yarn, just look for something that recommends uh, the five millimeter H hook or something similar. This is considered a fingering weight yarn. It has a lot of nice texture to it. Uh, I would recommend working up a swatch and uh, just seeing what uh, you like. Okay, so I went ahead and made our first mitt already. We're gonna make the second one together. This is, like I mentioned before, we have two sizes. This is the smaller size, there is a larger size, and I will provide information if you prefer the larger size. It's a, just a difference of a couple of chains uh, extra when we begin, and a couple of chains uh, when we create this thumb hole. Okay, the button is also optional. You can add the button if you like. We have our other button here for the one we'll be making. I use matching yarn to stitch it on just to kind of tie it all together. Uh, it doesn't really have a purpose. It's purely decorative. It's not holding anything together or anything like that. And it hits right at the wrist. So if you put it on, it'll hit, you know, right here. And it looks very fallish. But our mitt that we'll be making has a starting chain of 33. If you want to make the larger size, start with a starting chain of 37. So let's put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up that loop and tighten, okay? To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33. So here is our starting chain. Next, because we're making a tube, basically, we're going to join with a slip stitch in the chain farthest from our hook. So if we go all the way down to the end here, that very first chain we made, we're gonna join with a slip stitch. So insert your hook into that chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through that first loop, and then bring it through the second loop. We now have the bottom of our mitt. 
just like that, okay? So let's begin round one. We're going to chain three now. Now, see this tail here? You can hold this along the edge as you work, or you can go ahead and weave it in later. It's totally up to you. So we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Now this chain three counts as a double crochet. Let's hop over to the next chain, and we're going to work a double crochet into that chain. To make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop, Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook. Okay? Work a double crochet into the next chain. Double crochet in the next chain. So we're just going to be working a double crochet in every chain all the way around. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and continue working my double crochets all the way around, and then we will rejoin towards the end of the round and we'll learn how to finish off this round and to move on to round two. Okay, so I'm just working that last double crochet in this last little chain here. And then what we're gonna do where we begin this double crochet, or this, excuse me, this chain three, this uh, one, two, third chain up, insert your hook into that chain and we're joining with a slip stitch to close the round. Let me slide this out of the way so you can see it a little bit better. So bring up a loop and then bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. So round one is complete and I'm just going to weave my tail in later. Okay, so let's move on to round two and that's going to begin this um, really nice textured uh, stitch pattern that we have here. So what we want to do for round two is to chain three. Again, this counts as one of our double crochets. One, two, three. So this double crochet is going to be just right on top of that other one, and that'll create just a really subtle little seam. See, you can kind of see it right here, um, but it, it's not too obvious, I don't think. Okay, so our first stitch that we come to um, of our round, we're going to work a front post double crochet. So if you've never done that before, what you need to do is, it, it's very similar to a regular double crochet. Just wrap yarn around hook, and then come up under the post of that double crochet, then wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through the way you came, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook. Okay, we're going to work another one of those in the next stitch. So come up under, we wrap yarn around hook, then come up under, wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through the way you came, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook. So you can already see that texture starting to emerge. Okay, the next two stitches we're going to work back post double crochets. They're very similar. So wrap yarn around hook, but instead of going up, uh, up under it, you're going to come from the back to front, go over top of it that way, and reinsert your hook back in there, wrap yarn around hook, now pull it through back with the way you came. You should have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, okay? If you feel stuck at this point with the front post and the back post double crochets, I do have a separate video for each stitch. And if you want to practice on a little, um, you know, some scrap yarn uh, off to the side before you commit to this project, definitely do that and, and work the stitch over and over until you feel comfortable. Okay, so we did one back post double crochet. Now we're going to do another one. So wrap yarn around hook. Now come up from back to front. Go over top of that post and back down. Wrap yarn around hook. Bring the yarn through the way you came. Wrap yarn around hook. Bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook. Bring it through the last two loops. Okay, so we've, so far we've done two front post double crochets and two back post. And for the remainder of our mitts, this stitch pattern is going to be groups of two like that as well. Okay? So we're just going to continue in this sequence all the way around. So two front post double crochet, two back post double crochet, two front post, two back post, okay? So in the next stitch, we'll do a front post double crochet, 
I'm going to pick up speed just a little bit. If you feel stuck, just pause and go back to the explanation part. Okay, so I work two front post. Now let's do two back post. So that was one. And that's two. Now let's do two front post double crochet. That's one. And two. Okay. Now we're ready for two back post double crochet. If you're learning this stitch as well, this is a great pattern because this will um, help you practice these stitches a lot. Okay, two front post. One and two. And then two back post double crochet. Once you learn where to orient your hook uh, for the front and both back post, the rest completing the stitch is exactly the same. Okay, two front post double crochet. Just like that, get a little bit more yarn. And then two back post double crochet. One and two. Two front post. We are moving right around the perimeter of this mitt. Okay, that was one, this is two. And then two back post double crochet. Two front post. That's one. And two. And then two back posts. See, we're almost back to where we started. Okay, so that was two front posts. So now we're ready for two back post double crochet. So one. And two, and then two front post double crochet, one, and two, get a little bit more yarn there. Okay, and now we're right at the end, two back post double crochet. And if your stitch count is uh, on target there, um, I'll show you in just a second what I mean. Okay, two back post double crochet. If your stitch uh, sequence is correct, see the next is front post so it goes back post front post so we're right back at that chain three at the beginning of our round so count one two three chains up insert your hook we're going to join with a slip stitch like we did before insert your hook bring up a loop bring that loop through the loop on your hook already okay so round two is complete then we're going to move on to uh, round three and round three is basically the same thing we just did. We're just going to be doing the reverse of that. Okay For round three, we're going to do the same thing in chain three one two three Now like I mentioned before we're going to be doing the reverse of what we did in the previous round to get this kind of little uh, woven looking boxes So what we're going to do is the see these first two stitches these are both um, back uh, front post double crochets that we worked in the previous round. So we're going to do the opposite. Instead of doing a front post double crochet again, we're going to do a back post double crochet. So that's what I mean by the opposite. So wrap yarn around hook, come up from the back, over top of the post, back down, wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through, yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Do that again for that other stitch. Again, we're still working in sets of two, okay? So then we've come to the next two stitches. Those are from the previous round, our back post double crochet. So we're going to work to front post double crochet. So you're just doing the opposite of what you did in the previous round. And once you get going with a few stitches, it'll 
kind of present itself as to what to do for each stitch. Okay, so we worked two front posts, now we're working two back posts. So we're just gonna do this all the way around. If you get stuck, just look and see what you, you did in the previous round. So if you're not familiar with this stitch, when you look at a front post double crochet, it looks like columns. If you look at a back post double crochet, there's a little ridge there. So that'll hopefully help identify where you're at in this round. Okay, so I'm gonna keep working all the way around, working my back post double crochets, two of those, two front post double crochet, two back post double crochet, two front post double crochet. And then we're going to um, rejoin when we get towards the end of this round and I'll show you how to uh, keep going. Okay, so I'm just working that last stitch of round three. And then to complete, we're just going to see right this chain three from the beginning of our round. Count one, two, three chains up, insert the hook into the chain, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. So closing with a slip stitch, okay? So you can see we're starting to get that really pretty texture of our other mitt. Okay, so then what we wanna do to keep going is uh, we're gonna keep repeating let me get my yarn here. We're gonna keep repeating rounds two and three over and over until we have a total of eight rounds. That's including these first three we worked also. So once you have a total of eight rounds, um, we're gonna rejoin, and then I'm gonna show you how to work this uh, thumb hole here, okay? Which is very easy to do. All right, so I'm gonna proceed. Uh, again, you'll start each round with a chain three. One, two, three. And then we're just gonna be repeating rounds two and three of the pattern until we have a total of eight rounds. Okay, I'm just working that last stitch. Now we've been repeating rounds two and three for a total of eight rounds. So you have a nice uh, cuff started. And if you notice, we are at where our thumb hole is. So the next round, we will be working our thumb hole for our mitts. Okay, so we're just gonna count one, two, three chains up, join with a slip stitch, same way we've been doing. And then the bottom portion of our mitt is complete. So let's work the thumb hole round next. Okay, for round four, the thumb hole row, um, I wanted to point out, so if you wear the mitt on your left hand, this is the left mitt, and even though they are gonna look identical, where we joined our round, you're gonna have a slight little tiny seam. If this doesn't bother you, you can just make two of these and just flip it over and wear the other one, like this. But if this seam kind of sticks out to you, like it does for me, it's, it's subtle, but it still shows. Um, I'll show you how to put the thumb hole on this side. So what we're gonna do is, for our example mitt, I'm gonna show you how to do this thumb hole, and then we're just gonna continue around and I'm gonna show you how to do the other thumb hole as well. Now, you're not gonna put both thumb holes on here. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to do it and then we'll rip it out and I'll show you how to do the other one, if that makes sense. Okay, so for round four, let's do the um, left thumb hole first, okay? So if you're making this one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is chain three. One, two, three and just the same thing we've been doing. And then what we're gonna do is, hold on, I have it written down here so I don't mess you up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is still work in your stitch sequence. So see how we have these front post double crochets work a back post and a back post double crochet. We're just continuing the same uh, pattern, little stitch pattern we have going. Now work your two front post double crochets. Same thing you've been doing in previous rounds. Okay, so now we're ready for our thumb hole for the left mitt, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do this and then we'll rip it out and I'll show you how to do so it's like this, okay? 
All right, so we're at where we want the thumb hole to be. So what we're going to do now is chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, okay? Now, what you'll wanna do is, that's where we are right now. You'll wanna count six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're in groups of two, so that makes it easy. So you're gonna skip all six of these stitches right here, and then locate the next stitch that you come to, and that happens to be a back post double crochet. So we're gonna work a front post double crochet. We're still staying in our stitch sequence. And then another front post double crochet. And then a back post. So we're just picking right back up where we left off, sort of, okay? So back post double crochet, back post double crochet, front post, and so forth and so on, okay? So you would just continue all the way around uh, to where we join and then join with a slip stitch, okay? So you just go all the way around. And what it'll do, it'll look like this, okay? Now for the larger size, instead of skipping chaining eight and skipping six, when you get to this point, you will uh, chain 10 and skip eight stitches and then just keep continuing around, okay? So now what we're gonna do is, so that is, let me just show you where we're at here. That would be the left mitt. Now our right mitt is going to be a mirror image of this mitt, okay? So let me rip this out. And we're gonna show you how to do the other thumb hole. So you have a mirror image, okay? So let's back it right back up to the very beginning, okay? Now, I want you to if you have a stitch marker or a little, even like a little paper clip, something on hand, um, this is a helpful time to mark off where we're gonna go, okay? Go back here and we're gonna count to the last 10 stitches, okay? So this is where we are now, right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10, okay? So this is where we're gonna crochet to. So just take your little stitch marker and just mark it, or whatever you have. You can just, you can even use a, a little clipper, um, like I said, a paper clip, something you have on hand. Or even if you have a little piece of scrap yarn, you could just tie it right on there. Nothing fancy needed, okay? So we have where our thumb hole is gonna be on the other side, let's keep going. Okay, so for the right mitt thumb hole, we're going to chain three. Same thing, one, two, three. Now we're gonna work in our stitch sequence all the way around until we come to that thumb hole. So the left mitt, the thumb hole, is kind of at the beginning of the round. The right mitt, the thumb hole, is sort of at the end of the round, okay? So that is how you get that mirror image. And that allows the, um, less attractive seam area uh, to be kept at the palm of the hand and not show on the public side the top of your hand. Okay, so I am just continuing around. I'm quickly just working my front post double crochets and back posts. We're still doing the opposite, same thing we've been doing. And that keeps our mitt looking nice and uniform all the way around. And again, we marked off those last 10 stitches because that's what we're gonna be working our thumb hole. Okay, so I'm just working my back post double crochet, whoops, my back post double crochets, my front post double crochets, all the way around. And I really love this stitch. This is um, a great stitch to use with this weight. Uh, we're using not a huge hook today, so um, it gives you a little texture and it actually creates little pockets of warmth without being overly bulky. This is a really easy and very pretty and highly textured stitch. We're just keeping it throughout the entire mitt, okay? So we're almost to our stitch marker. I'm trying to do this quickly so we can get to the point so I can show you because you've already seen the this part. Okay, so here we are 
approaching our stitch marker and we're still working in our stitch sequence. Okay, and that just helps us remember where we need to go. Still working those front post and back post double crochets. Okay, so now we're a couple stitches before where we need to be and let's go ahead and work those stitches. They happen to be back post double crochets because as you know the stitches from the previous round were front post double crochets. Okay, so now at this time I can take my stitch marker out because we know exactly where we are. Just put it aside. Okay, so then what we want to do is we're doing the same thing but just over here on the um, just over on this side of our mitt. Okay, so what we're going to do for this side is to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did for the other thumb hole. We're going to count six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're going to work the remaining stitches. Okay? So they happen to be front post double crochets from the previous round. So we're going to do back post double crochets into those. Okay? Same thing we've been doing. Okay, and now I just have two stitches left. And I wanted to mention if you are working the larger size, um, let me just work this last stitch. Okay, um, if you are working the larger size, put your stitch marker um, at the last 12 stitches instead of 10. And then when you get here, you're going to chain 10 and then uh, skip over eight stitches and then pick back up where you left off. So it's very, very similar. We're just adding a few um, stitches just to kind of enlarge it a little bit, okay? If you like to see um, in uh, written form the sizing and the variance in instructions, all of this is also at the FiberFlux blog and there is a link uh, to the pattern as well so you can see both sizes. Okay, also I encourage you when you are making this, everybody has different tension and uh, especially if you're using different yarn, you might find that the smaller size is just a little bit snug or um, the larger size is too large um, based on your tension and your yarn, etc. So um, I encourage you as you make this, when you get to this point here, see how we just did our thumb hole, before proceeding, just slip it on. See how that thumb fits. See how everything is fitting. Okay? I'm going to slip that back off. Okay, so our thumb hole round is complete. So what we're going to do is the same exact thing we've been doing. Join with the slip stitch to close the round. Okay? So round four is complete. Now we're going to begin round five and I'm going to show you how to work into that thumb hole and then proceed. Okay? Okay, so for round five, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to chain three, one, two, three. And then we're going to just keep working in our stitch sequence. Now, whether you're working the right mitt or the left mitt, uh, it doesn't matter because when you get to this hole, we're just going to be working regular double crochets right into this hole. So whether you arrive at it at, at the hole up here or later on it's worked the same exact way and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's get to where we need to go staying in the stitch sequence the two um, front post double crochet two back post double crochet just do the opposite of what you did in the previous round and then um, let's see where are we there we are okay sometimes I have to stop and look and see if where I'm at and what I did in the previous row so I know how to proceed. Okay, so we're just working in our stitch sequence. And if you are working the left mitt, you would have arrived at the thumb hole by now. But just bear with me for one moment because we are working the right mitt and that one is on the other side. But again, they're worked the same exact way. Um, and once I show you, it'll make more sense, okay? So, 
Just working those post stitches all the way around. And also, if you um, made the larger mitt, it's also worked the same exact way. We're going to work a couple more double crochets, and I will explain when we get to that point just how many you'll want to work. Whoops. Okay, we're just coming around and we're almost at our thumb hole. So you're gonna see how it all comes together. Okay, so I'm just working my post stitches. Okay, now we have two left till we get to that thumb hole. So just work those in pattern. Okay, just like that. This one on the end here might be a little bit weird, but um, just grab the yarn just like that, okay? Now, okay, so now we're ready to work the thumb hole. So whether you um, are working the left mitt or the right mitt or the smaller size or the larger size, we're gonna be doing this the same exact way. The larger size, the double crochets will be slightly different and I'll explain that more in just a second. Okay, so this is our space. We're gonna be working right into that space. So if you're working the smaller size, you're going to work six double crochets into the space. If you're making the larger size mitt, you're going to work eight double crochets into this space, okay? So we're making the smaller size, so I'm going to work six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, it might look a little bit spread out right now, but it's gonna kind of all come together and sort of neaten itself up as we uh, work rows into these rows, okay? Or round, excuse me. Okay, so now we can just continue um, around. Now. Because I'm working the right mid, I don't have too much more to go. Okay, so see these two stitches, these first two stitches you come to, they happen to be back post double crochets. So go ahead and work a front post double crochet into that very first stitch right there on the end. And again, that might be kind of odd, but um, it'll make sense as you proceed and work more rounds into it. Okay, so you can already see that thumb hole is form. It's formed actually, it's not forming, it's formed. Okay, so then our last two stitches of the round are gonna be back post double crochets. Let's see where we're at, oh, there we are. Okay, sometimes these last couple stitches can get a little crunched up. Okay, so round five is complete. So now what we're gonna do is this beginning chain, count three chains up, join with a slip stitch to close the round, okay? So I just want to take my hook out for a moment. And I encourage you, like I mentioned before, to try this stuff on as you're doing it to just make sure everything's feeling right, okay? So now our seam is gonna be on the inside of this mitt and our seam is going to be on the inside of this mitt, okay? So we have a mirror image of our mitts and this one is really shaping up nicely and these don't take long at all to make. Okay, um, so then we're ready to move on to our final rounds. And these are pretty easy. This is just the top part of our mitt, okay? Okay, to continue with our mitt and finish it off, the top part, we're going to do the same thing. Chain three, one, two, three. Uh, we're gonna do exactly what we did on the bottom part, but we need to begin with round three. So remember for the bottom, we repeated rounds two and three. We need to start with three because we have front post from the previous round, so we need to begin with back post double crochets to continue this uh, woven looking stitch that we're doing, okay? So repeat round three, back post double crochet, front post. If uh, in the event 
that your round uh, of your project is the opposite of what I'm, I'm doing, which can sometimes happen when we transition. Uh, just do the opposite. Just You just always want to do the opposite of what you did in the previous round, okay? So we're just going to do this all the way around like we did before. Back post double crochet two times, front post double crochet two times, all the way around. Whoops, my stitch got a little caught up there. Okay, I'm going to keep working my round, and then when we get to this round, I'll help you uh, complete this round and we'll start on the next round and that'll be the round, these two rounds that we're working now will be the rounds that you work for the remainder of the pattern. Okay, so when you get to where we did the thumb hole section of the previous round, remember we're still just working in pattern, um, but with these are regular double crochets so that could um, be a bit confusing. But just keep doing the, the two back posts, two front posts, two back posts, and so forth. Um, so we just did two back post double crochets. So now in these next two double crochets on the thumb hole, we'll do two front post. Okay. Then we'll do two back post. And this goes, the same goes for left mitt, right mitt, larger size, smaller size. Just work what would come next in the sequence, okay? So two front post here. Just like that, okay? Then we're at our next uh, part of the mitt. We've left the thumb hole section and we're back to the regular part of the mitt. Okay, so that would be two back post. Okay, and then you can just keep on going with your, your mitt all the way around. And I happen to have just two stitches left on mine. So one and two. Then we're going to join again, once again, with a slip stitch to close the round, okay? So you can see now the top of that thumb hole is starting to um, blend in with the mitt more. See that, how it just continues in the, the pattern. Okay, so then we're going to repeat um, round two. Now remember round two, we're gonna chain three. One, two, whoops, missed that last one three. <laughs> and then um, round two, remember round two begins with two front post double crochets. So you're going to be repeating these two rounds and um, what you'll do to finish the top of the mitt is just repeat rounds uh, three like we did previously and round two over and over and over until you have a total of six rounds um, more rounds. So we just worked two, so we just need to work four more rounds for a total of six on that top part. Okay? So I'm going to continue working my rounds, just working uh, the opposite stitch of what you did in the previous row. That's the easiest way to keep track of all this. Um, so I'm going to work this round and then four more rounds, and that'll give us a total of six because remember we did one before, um, right after the thumb hole row. Now we're doing one, then we're going to do four more for a total of six rounds. And then um, I will show you how to finish your mitt, how to weave in the ends, and we're going to sew a button. Now, again, the button is totally optional, but if you like that look, definitely stick around for that part, okay? So I'm going to just keep going with my rounds, and we will rejoin in just a moment to finish off our mitts. Okay, I'm just working that very last stitch of the mitt. Okay, and then what we're going to do is join with a slip stitch to close the round. Same thing in that third chain up. Just join that with a slip stitch, okay? 
So our mitt is complete. Now if you want to keep going and make yours taller, same with the uh, bottom portion if you want to adjust for height, that's totally fine too. So what we're going to just do now is just cut the yarn and then we can fasten off with our hook. And then just make sure that knot is nice and secure. And our mitt is complete. So now we have a mirror image of our other mitt. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just take our tapestry needle and turn your mitt inside out. And we're going to weave these ends in. So just thread your tapestry needle. And then what you're going to do is just send your needle through in one direction. And then come back in the other direction to kind of lock that end in, help keep it from popping out. Just kind of give it a little tug to straighten everything out and trim with your scissors. Then we're going to repeat for the other end. Just thread your tapestry needle. And then just go in one direction with your tapestry needle. and then just come in the other direction and your ends will be all woven in. The last thing we have to do is sew our button on. So what we wanna do is turn your mitt right side out and grab your button. Now again, this is completely optional, but we have our other one hitting on the wrist. So when we put it on, it hits right at that, right at your wrist bone right there. Okay, so let's put that one back. Now when we put this one on, we'll see just, whoops, just exactly where that's going to go. So just kind of visually just mark it to yourself. Okay, so I'm going to put mine right about here. Okay, so what you'll want to do is take a piece of yarn. Oh, I don't know, about 12 inches or so. That's probably way more than you need, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. So go ahead and thread your tapestry needle and figure out where you want your button to go. And then just come up from the bottom, and this is a matching piece of yarn, and then go back down. Now depending on your button, mine only has two holes. Some of them uh, have four. So just however your button is. Some um, just have uh, a flat, uh, plain front, and then up underneath there's a a little loop underneath. So I really need to get it on there. And I tilted mine. See how this one is um see how this one is kind of tilted? I tilted that one also. Okay, so once your button is exactly where you want it, then you can remove your tapestry needle and just tie the back. Making sure that it's where you'd like it. Just tie a couple knots in there just to get everything nice and tight. Okay, then what you can do is turn your mitt inside out again and then thread your tapestry needle just like that. Go in one direction. And then do the same for the other little tail. You can cut the, this is in the inside of the mint. You could also cut these flush to the inside of the mint. It's not as big of a deal um, because nobody's going to see it. It's the inside part. So either way, but I like to weave mine in. Okay, so the mitts are complete and they look awesome. And you can try it on and make sure you like the way it fits. And that's it. So that is how you crochet the Autumn Glow Mitts. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.